Welcome back, guys. Welcome to our little channel here at Criminal Claws, where we love to show off all of our nail goodies. If you are new here, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified each and every time we upload. Because when we release new things, we bring it here. And if you want to follow us on IG, we are criminalclaws.store. And all the links will be down below in the description box. So, I promised I would bring you guys the Minute Kit, and here it is. <laughs> so, getting started with our Minute Kit, it comes with instructions and the contents, which is everything that you're going to get with this kit. These instructions go very in-depth, so you shouldn't have too many questions after reading through them. I do suggest that you read through the instructions before doing your set of nails, just to make sure that you're brushed up on the process, even if you know about this process. So opening the Minute Kit, you're going to run into the 4-ounce monomer, which is a EMA low-odor monomer with a sweet scent. So this still has a monomer scent. It's just a lower odor. It doesn't stink to the high heavens. And it is a slow, smooth-setting monomer that is a primerless monomer. And then you get two one-ounce jars of nude acrylic. Look at how beautiful these jars are. They're frosted glass jars. And you have about five options for each jar. So you get to build your own kit. In this kit, it came with one in the pink and nip slip. So then you get the 100, 180 grit hand file. You get full cover, soft gel, coffin tips. You get a size 12 signature Kalinsky brush. You get a cuticle pusher, a monomer dropper, a pumice stick, and a wooden cuticle pusher, which I'll show you what we can use that for here in a minute. I put it in just for a little extra cleanup to make it easier on people that don't want to be able to use their brush to clean up the sides or underneath. So getting into the process, we do end up Going to step one, we're going to push back our cuticles with a cuticle pusher or pumice stick. Now, I do um, just kind of go past the cuticle pusher anymore and go straight to the pumice stick. I love it so much. It's so great at putting back the cuticle area, cleaning up all the debris, the protein, dead skin growth on the nail plate. It scratches it all away and it lifts up that skin away from the nail plate, pushes it back. It does such a great job at it. Um, the cuticle pusher itself does not have a grit to it. So the pumice stick actually has a grit like a file and it just lifts the cuticle area right up and pushes it right back way better than a regular cuticle pusher does. So I've fallen in love with this step and I don't even use a cuticle pusher anymore except for later in the process. If I'm doing someone else's nails and I go into lay acrylic and I want to just push the cuticle area up just a little bit more later on in the process after doing it the first time with the pumice stick, that's about it. I don't really use a cuticle pusher anymore. I've just fallen in love with this pumice stick. It just, it works way too well to not go ahead and just use it. So after pushing back the cuticle area and using the pumice stick to get up in there and get all that nasty, crusty, dusty stuff out, we go in and we etch our nail beds with the 100, 180 grit hand file. So you need to make sure if you're not going to get our prep and prime kit, the preppy bitch kit, <laughs> I know, I love that name. I don't know why I don't really cuss, but it just fits so perfect. And I mean, I, every time I think of prep, I think of preppy. So yeah, we named it our preppy bitch kit. And if you don't opt for that when you buy this kit, because it is not included, if you don't get that kit, if you don't use Prime or Dehydrate, 
if you don't go in with those stains, this is so important that you make sure that you clean up your nail area as well as possible. And then make sure that you etch the nail beds as much as you possibly can. Now, when I say that, I just mean as thoroughly as possible. Please do not be rough with your nail beds. Do not add pressure with the file. Just gently swipe the file across your nail beds and it should do the work for you. These are fresh utensils. And doing it this process, you should really not be doing much wear and tear on these utensils because you don't have to file the nails into shape. You don't have to sit there and, you know, uh, go around the cuticle area like crazy. You shouldn't get much wear and tear on your file. Your file should stay pretty good for you for a while. So as you can see, I'm getting around that cuticle area really well, going around the side walls, making sure that any little white debris or dead skin that I could have missed with the pumice stick, I'm going to get that with this file. I'm going to make sure that there is no shine on my nail bed at all, and I'm going to go in gently. I'm not putting pressure. I'm just gently wiping over the top of the nail bed putting etches down in the nail so that it gives the acrylic something to sink down in and grip onto. That's all this process is for. Do not overfile your nail. You will cause more grief than anything. If you overfile your nail, your nails actually will not hold gel or acrylic very well anymore. You'll have to wait for them to grow out. Overfiled nails do not hold any substance very well. So after we go in and we etch our nail beds, we're going to clean up all the dust and everything off of our hands, nails, anything that could get into the products. We don't want to open our jars and be having dust fall down in the powders or monomer. So we're just going to clean up all of that and then we're going to go in and we're going to size our full cover gel tips. Do you see the space that's left in between the nail and the tip? You should leave space. You do not want to push these all the way down onto the nail plate. These are not press on nails. These are full sculpted gel nails. So you need to leave space and when I size my tips, I make sure that I don't have to push down. If you have to push down at all onto your nail bed, you'll notice that there's a pinch feeling against your nail bed. Now, it's not bad at first when you're sizing, you don't realize it, but once you add the acrylic and it's stuck onto your nail bed for two weeks to three weeks, depending, but as you you know, wear them, it can make your nail beds actually pretty sore if you have a small tip on your nail. So it's always good to kind of go in if you can't find one that fits perfectly sidewall to sidewall without overhanging onto the skin. It's good just to kind of grab one that's a little bit bigger because unlike gel, Acrylic actually adheres to these tips amazingly. And when I say that, I mean that it almost melts the inside of the tip. Right now, okay, so I'm getting too far ahead. We're going to go in with the pumice stick and we're going to etch the inside of the tips after we size them. Now, when you're doing a gel application, you need to etch the inside of your tips very, very well. Gel has issues adhering to shiny plastic surfaces, resin, other gels. You never want to add gel to a shiny surface. So you definitely need to make sure that you etch the inside really well. Now with an acrylic application doing it this way, you really don't have to etch the inside of the tips this thoroughly. You really can just add a couple swipes out the other side and you're good to go. Because if you've seen people, instead of using a pumice stick or a drill, they actually end up etching the inside of the tip with primer. Monomer actually does the same thing. It melts the inside of the tip to a certain degree. So when you go to apply the acrylic inside the tip and put it onto your fingernail, at a certain level, it's melting that tip 
and it's blending together beautifully. So if you oversize the tip and go to file it back down to its slimmer shape, instead of putting too small of a tip on and causing yourself pain, put a little bit too big of a tip on. If you can't find one that fits perfect, go a size bigger. And when you file back, you're not even going to know that you're filing through a plastic tip. They blend together perfectly. You won't know, I promise. So you guys, the holidays are getting near. We got Halloween, we got Thanksgiving, we got Christmas. Do you guys got any plans? What are you guys going to do? And are you going to do any themed nail sets? Uh, on the site right now, we have mystery bags that you can buy. And each month is a different mystery bag. It's themed to that month. So right now we are selling our October mystery bag and it is themed to October and it has some really cool surprises in it. And they will always come with four sample jars of acrylic, which are half ounce jars. And that's what a lot of people actually sell. We only sell on our site one ounce and two ounce jars. But in our mystery bags, we give half ounce jars, which we call samples. And a lot of other companies actually only sell their acrylic in half ounce or quarter ounce jars. So it's a really good amount and it's definitely worth your money. It is so fun and funky and cute. I'm so proud of these mystery bags. We actually have mystery bags going out to one of our ambassadors, Miss Galore, which her link is down below. So she's going to be doing an unboxing and showing you guys what all is in the mystery bag and releasing it on her own. And once the mystery bag kind of gets out there and people see what the contents are, then we're actually going to be releasing something really cool. But this mystery bag is kind of the initial release of it. So if you buy the mystery bag, you're going to be the first of anybody to get to see what's going on with the company. It's really cool. You got to check it out. It's going to be so fun. And you're going to be able to create so many cute, funky nails, especially for Halloween. There's so much nail art in them. You just, you're not going to, you're going to come up with so many ideas. It's so fun. But yeah, are you going to be doing any themed nail art? <laughs> I love themed nail art. I love getting to do nail art in general. That's why I love these minute nails because I got frustrated sculpting my own sets of nails. And you know, when you're doing your own set, you're there for about three hours if they're long nails. And then to get started on the nail art after three hours of sitting there and sculpting, I would just kind of slack off on the nail art a little bit because I was tired of sitting there. So now with the Minute Kit nails, I can get my nail art done or I can get my nail sculpting done in about 20 minutes. I can apply these nails in about 20 minutes, ready to go, ready for nail art. And yeah, I can enjoy it. So here is our Preppy Bitch Kit. And this is an option that you have. It does not come in the kit. You can buy it on the site though. It comes with our Dehydrate Her, our Prime Her, and our Diamond Gel Non-Wipe Top Gel. So this is on the site right now for $25. It originally goes for $30. Each um, bottle, our Prime Her, our Dehydrate Her, and our Top Gel each go for $12.99, but right now on the site, they're $10.99 each on sale, and if you have an ambassador code, you can apply that to the sale items and still get additional money off. So, I love this Preppy Bitch kit. It's such a good deal. I feel like we are trying to keep our prices as low as possible, what we can for our customers, because I really love our customers, and most of our customers are return customers. The people that buy from us come back and buy again and again, and I love that. It shows me that we're doing something right at least. So if you opt to buy the Preppy Bitch kit with this um, Minute kit, then you're going to go in with your dehydrator after etching your nail bed and wiping away the dust. You're going to go in and apply the dehydrator to your nail beds and then give it about 10 seconds. Make sure that your nails are all chalky and white. And then you're going to go in with your primer. You're not going to get it on your skin. You're going to be very sparingly about it. 
it's a non-acid primer that's like a double-sided sticky tape so it adheres really well to the nail bed and to the extension it's what causes longevity if you buy this kit your nails are probably going to be lasting four to five weeks so i definitely want to push this option but if you don't buy the preppy bitch kit that's perfectly fine because as i said our monomer is a primerless monomer it actually has primer in it so you can skip this step if need be and go in and just start applying your nail tips it's perfectly fine So I just realized and I want to say I want to apologize now for the lack of entertainment in this video. Usually we're all laughing and joking and everything else and it's more high energy. But this is just a tutorial. I want to be able to have something for customers to reference and be able to look onto and see what steps are necessary and to be able to help them get through this process. So this is really just a tutorial video trying to get out as much information that's necessary to apply these tips as possible. So I'm sorry that this is not super interesting and a bunch of nail art. But hey, we got another video coming and I'm going to be sculpting and we're going to be doing some fun crap, I swear. Well, I mean, the last video with the Little Mermaid was pretty cool too. So now you see how nasty and gunky this is. Look at the monomer and how it gets so sticky and gross looking. Now that's why this is primerless monomer because it, if, yeah. It's just, it's sticky on its own. So I guess, I don't know. Um, yeah, but our prime, our monomer is a primerless monomer. It does add a certain level of adhesion. So if you don't want to go in with the preppy B kit, yeah, I'm at my B um, things for the day. I'm, I'm above that level. I don't usually cuss. I just thought it was a cute name, <laughs> but we're at it for the day. So we're going to take our monomer dropper, get out our monomer. You don't have to try to pour your monomer out of these glass jars. Don't worry about it. So you're not spilling it. So actually, as a part of the instructions, it explains how to break in your new brush and how to prime it for best use. Now, as part of the instructions, we tell you that you need to get out all the packing starch from the bristles by rubbing it between your fingers and then flicking the dust away. Then you want to take your brush and you want to smash it into the bottom of your dappin' dish. Obviously not angrily, not roughly. You just want to smash the bristles down into the bottom. Try doing it gently. This is not an anger management course. And, you know, just kind of swish it around, clean it out on a paper towel, wipe your brush. Then you're going to go back in and do it a couple times. Now, as part of priming the bristles, I usually take cuticle oil and actually massage it into the bristles and then wipe that off onto a paper towel and then i go back in i dunk our brush back into the monomer and i usually just let it sit there for about 10 to 20 minutes now what that does is it builds up a residue around the bristles that sticky stuff that you watched me wipe out of the bottom of the monomer dish now um once monomer actually evaporates it leaves that sticky residue kind of like a primer does so it's kind of like primering your brush letting your brush sit in that monomer for a certain amount of time and then you know after 10 to 20 minutes it builds up a little bit of residue onto the bristles which cause it to be easily wipe, wiped out the acrylic does not really stick to the bristles once you have that sticky layer on the outside of them so after letting it soak 10 to 20 minutes i pull it out of the monomer and i just let it sit out on the desk for another 10 to 20 minutes and that really primes my brush to get me through about three to four uses without acrylic building up easily inside the bristles. Our brushes are 100% Kalinsky sable hair brushes. They are made in America. The handle is handcrafted mahogany wood. And now our brushes are finally, they are engraved with criminal claws. 
but now they have an acetone resistant finish on the outside of the brushes so that you don't have to worry about the varnish wiping off with acetone or monomer. So now they're definitely leveled up and way better than they was before. And I'm so proud of them. I love them. They're so beautiful. They have this Jeepers Creepers style writing that I'm just super proud of. So when we're going in and applying these tips with the acrylic, I just, I say, and uh, it's not going to be the same for every finger. We're going to judge it off of a P size bead, right? So on average, most fingers could probably handle a wet P size bead of acrylic. Now, if you have small little pinkies, you might want to go with half of that. And if you have a big thumb, you might want to go with a little bit more than that. But that's just our reference. So here I'm going in on my ring finger with a small wet pea size bead of acrylic. I wipe it towards the cuticle area. I apply it at a 45 degree angle near the cuticle and then slowly start to press down. Now I make sure that I don't sit there and jam it up into the cuticle area and I don't press it all the way down to the nail bed. Otherwise, all the acrylic is just gonna squeeze out and you're not gonna have the colored of the acrylic to be seen. You're just gonna see your nail bed itself. Then we flip the hand over and we do some cleanup under the free edge. You wanna get that brush up under your nail and kind of scoot it outwards to the free edge to flatten it out and you don't want that acrylic up on your skin. Super easy process, this is in real time. So you can see how easy it really is. Now, if you have trouble getting your brush up under your fingernail to push at that acrylic that came out from, from up above it, then you can use either your pumice stick or the wooden cuticle pusher to get up in there and kind of clean that out. You don't want it sitting on your skin because once it hardens, it gets a little uncomfortable and it just doesn't look good when you flip your hand over. You really want that to look good up under that free edge. So normally I would just go in after applying the tip, I would take a wet bead and fill in the free edge up under the nail. But I'm deciding to actually file these into a stiletto shape. So I don't wanna fill in the free edge with acrylic and make it harder to file. I'm just leaving it bare and I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna go ahead and apply them all, then file them down into stiletto and then fill them in. So here you see 45 degree angle, pushing it up towards the cuticle area and slowly letting it back down. Now, I know people are scared of acrylic, but acrylic is not like gel. It's not sticky. It doesn't flow everywhere on you. You don't have to cure these. You don't need a drill. You don't need a lamp unless you use our gel top coat, of course. But this is a super easy process. You don't have to sit there and try to figure out how to hold the nail down and get it up under a lamp at the same time and it going crooked on you. It's just, this is a way easier and more enjoyable process for me, I feel like. I love this process. I love it with acrylic. Acrylic is super easy to clean up. You can just grab your wooden cuticle pusher. If any come out the sides, you can grab the cuticle pusher and just wipe it away. Sometimes I just wipe it away with my own finger. So 45 degree angle, slowly pressing down, and then anything that comes out, just, yep, wipe it away. <laughs> that easy. Do not be scared of acrylic. It is super, super forgiving. And our system is a slow set system. The acrylic powder is slow set and the monomer is slow set. So you have about a minute or more once you apply this nail, if you decide that you don't like it, you can pull it off and just wipe the acrylic off the nail bed and kind of start over. You're not stuck with this. If something happens or there's a learning curve for you and you mess something up, you can take these back off. People feel like with acrylic, because it dries on its own, then they're just stuck with what they do. And that's not true you have up to a minute to play with this. So don't worry about it. It's really, really easy. And I feel like it's a lot easier than the gel process. So now we're gonna be showing a little bit of the filing process, getting these into shape for stilettos. And during this time, I wanted to 
say, um, I realize that I only mentioned one of our ambassadors, and that's not fair. We have two other amazing Criminal Claws ambassadors. We have Rachel from Rachel's Nail Glam on IG and here on YouTube, both Rachel's Nail Glam. You can look her up, and the links are down below in the description. And then we have a brand new ambassador, Bronzy Beauty, here on YouTube. It is Bronzy Beauty Nails, and the links will be below. Her IG is just Bronzy Beauty, and these are amazing women. Rachel is great at showing a lot of different small business products, and Bronzy is great at showing DIY methods for doing your own nails easily, similar to this method. So go check her out. Go check them out. Make sure that you say hi, say that I sent you, and welcome to the family. <laughs> uh, so here is the process of me just filing down the 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 free edge into stiletto and it's super easy as long as you don't fill in the free edge first so i'm going in and gonna fill in the free edge now with our acrylic just to make sure that we have a cohesive color and some strength out there on that free edge and bada bing bada boom we are done now, I'm not going to show a lot of the nail art in this video. This was mainly just a tutorial to show how to apply these nails and, you know, show you a design and what all you could possibly do with them. So when you go in on the free edge, make sure that you pick up a small wet bead to fill it in. You don't want to see no ridges. You got to butt that bead up to the previous dried bead under there and just make sure as long as it's wet it will blend perfectly our acrylic powders are super easy and blendable so as you see with my non-dominant hand i always just pick up the bead of acrylic with my right hand and then i just switch the brush over to my left hand for application try when you're doing non-dominant hand applications to use your right hand or your dominant hand as much as possible and whatever you have to do with your non-dominant hand you know you just do the minimal necessary so i'm gonna let you guys go i love you don't forget to subscribe don't forget to ring that notification bell so you know every time we upload we upload one to two three times a week um and yeah go check out our ambassadors they're amazing women and i love them and i'm so thankful for them they are amazing ambassadors to criminal clause products and they really show them off and showcase them so go check them out i love you guys i will see you again soon we're going to be showing some more acrylic powder soon uh and yeah i love you bye